Now it's time to brace the back, but before I do that, I have to put the back strip. It's a reinforcing strip that goes on the inside of the back and kind of reinforces the glue joint all along the center of the back. Some people call it a, a center strip, all kind of stuff. Uh, I would just call it a, a, some people call it a back graft, that's what I would call it, or the back reinforcement. But whatever you call it, that's the purpose of it. And this uh, brace, or this is basically, it's not a brace, it's just support for that seam. But it doesn't have to be radius because it's very flexible. And when you build the back, when you put the back onto the guitar, uh, that whole back from heel to tail will arch. And now what I'm doing, these are... Uh, driveway reflector uh, rods. They're fiberglass rods. I bought them at Lowe's and cut them. I have a shelf up above the bench that I'm working on. And so I just cut these so they were are a little bit longer than the distance from this instrument to that shelf. And I'm using, I'm just wedging these in and using this kind of like a poor man's go bar deck. If you don't know what a go bar deck is, it's it's a uh, a rig pretty much that does this. And you can you use uh, radius dishes. There I'm cleaning up, but you use radius dishes that are the same radius as the back or the top, whichever it is that you're bracing, and then you can brace the whole top or the whole back all in one shot instead of having to do it in stages with clamps the way I have done this one. But I don't use radius dishes. Uh, I don't have very much room to store things like that. I'd have to have two two foot by two foot radius dishes and the, the uh, go bar deck uh, and all of that. And it's just I don't have the room for it. So, I don't use them. But for something like this, this works as a, a makeshift go bar deck that allows me to glue this whole thing up all at once without having to worry about having clamps reach long enough and deep enough to reach to the center of the instrument's back. Basically, all I'll do is wedge these rods in, and just once I get the glue cleaned out, the squeeze out for the glue cleaned out, I'll just walk away and give it three, four hours to cure. And that's a piece of poplar rod there. Uh, it does the same job. And they're a bit fiddly because the shelf up above that I'm wedging them into is a bit flexible. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first brace that I'm going to glue and I'm going to use it to mark a section on this back graph. That's the same width as that brace. And I'll take a chisel 
and take that out, that section out, notch it out so that I can glue the back braces onto this guitar. Just take a razor saw and cut it out and then I'll chisel it that little section free. And I'll do this for all four of the back braces for this guitar. I want these to fit as well as I can get them to. Because at least two of them will be visible through the sound hole. Then it's just spread glue and clamp her up. Same procedure as with the front. The only difference is that the front had several more braces on it and they went in varying different directions and the arch for the front is much flatter. This is a 15 foot or 14 foot, I believe it was 14 foot arch and the top was a 28 foot arch. And if you don't know what that means, it means that the arch that's planed into this brace is a section of a 14 foot circle. If I were to lay this brace, the curved section, if I were to draw a 14 foot circle and lay this curved section of bracing up against it, it would match a section of that 14 foot circle that is the same length as this brace is. And the reason that you do that, arching the plates, the back and the top, make it stronger. It resists the pull of the, the top resists the pull of the strings much better than if it were flat because you've built an an arch in so it resists sinking or being pushed down and that's the purpose of it there are acoustics they used to be all all of them but most people use an arch now or a uh, radius but there are section are certain guitars or certain guitar builders that still build with a perfectly flat top. Uh, from what I remember reading, they are supposed to be a little bit more bass heavy, but all of that is going to be subjective and it's going to, the amount of bass that's in a guitar is going to vary, not just in what kind of arch is, is or isn't on it, but every little detail that uh, 
you could possibly think of will probably affect the way that it sounds in some way. So, you know, that when people talk like that, in my opinion, they're talking in really, really wide generalities. And so you have to take it with a grain of salt. When you saw me bracing and carving the braces for the top, uh, I uh, mentioned that I was trying to err on the side of a, of a heavier bass because I knew that the instrument it was smaller and had a shallower box volume than an instrument of this size would normally have. But again, that's a generality. You know, you generally do this or you generally do this or that to uh, enhance or tighten up the bass or whatever you want to do. Uh, but, you know, those are all just generalities and the way that the whole thing is built is, is going to make the most difference. And that's, those are things I have yet to learn. And there it is, braced up. <laughs>